Right guys, welcome back to the channel. So I said in my last video that I wanted to do a video talking about uh, plateaus and breaking through them. Because um, we all have them, especially when you've been training for a decent amount of time. And I can certainly talk from experience about some of the plateaus that I've had in the past and how I've pushed through them. Um, one in particular lasted for around about a year and I just made no progress. But anyway, to start off with, I just wanted to give you a bit of background information about um, my training past, um, how long I've been training, all that kind of stuff, how I've been training, um, so you can kind of understand where I'm coming from. So I started weight training when I was 19, um, so about six years ago. Um, and you know, I was, I was always, always active as a kid, you know, from the age of probably seven to you know, 16, I was playing to a fairly decent level of standard, uh, a de decent, level of st decent level of football, get your words out, Sam. Uh, decent level of football, um, as well as some other sports that I was um, uh, playing as well. So I played cricket, I played golf, uh, and some others that are a bit more active than those two. Um, but I was always a very active kid. Um, so I started weight training when I was 19. That became my sole priority in terms of sport. And, um, but it was always, <laughs> I was lifting basically for the first, you know, I'd, li I'd lift for three months, you know, I'd be really consistent, probably lift four times a week, um, lift for three months, get to where I want to be, feel like, you know, I'm 19, I'm going out a lot, you know, I'm meeting new people and that sort of stuff, I want to be looking, feeling confident in myself, feeling like I'm strong and I'm bigger than some other guys in the club and all this sort of thing. So I train for three months, get to where I want to be, feel like, yeah, do you know what? I'm looking pretty good right now, yeah, excellent. Uh, and just stop going and feel like, yep, yeah, that's it, I'll, I'm fine, I don't, I've got to where I want to be and I don't need to do anything more. Obviously then after a few weeks, um, my gains would start to dissipate and atrophy would sort of set in, say a few weeks, probably a month down the line, you can probably get away with, you know, two or three weeks without training and not really lose any muscle. But after about a month, my uh, atrophy would start to set in, I'd start to lose some of that muscle. I wouldn't be back to square one, but after probably three months, I'd have lost a significant amount of the muscle that I'd put on. Then I'd think, oh God, I've lost all that muscle. I need to go back to the gym, be, cons be consistent in the same way I was before for another three months and um, get back to where I want to be. Like, yep, yeah, fantastic, excellent, I'm there again, and I don't need to do anything, and same thing will happen. And I did that probably, you know, six times in a two year period. I had a three month spurt, or less than that probably, actually probably more like four or five times in a, six, in a two year period. I just trained for three months and then just completely stopped. So then the second two years, I um, continued to train in basically the same vein as I had been for the first two years. Um, however, I stay consistent. Um, so this is from the age of 21 to 23, the second two years. So this has been 21, I've trained consistently four or five times a week, sometimes three times a week, sometimes a little bit less than that even. Um, you know, other things going on in life sometimes and gym maybe isn't a priority um, at every, every stage of everyone's life. So um, I trained consistently. However, I trained the same as I did in the previous two years in that I, every single session I did, I did a full body workout. And now when I think about it, it's like, it's stupid really. Um, so um, yeah, every single time I went to the gym, I would do a bicep exercise, a triceps exercise, a chest exercise, a shoulders exercise, that's four exercises. Uh, I'd probably then do another, you know, if I was going out that evening, I'd do another biceps and triceps exercise. Uh, and then I might do, you know, and a back exercise. I'm not sure if I said back, but yeah, maybe another back exercise if I hadn't. So I'd do seven exercises uh, for three sets each, so 21 working sets in total, um, smash it out in about 40 minutes and um, get myself home. So, and I did that again for the next two years. So I did four years of basically training, you know, training every single body part, pretty much every single day, or at least every other day if I went four times a week. Um, so yeah, the first year when I trained consistently, obviously I thought, yeah, this is going great. You know, I've stayed consistent, got so much bigger than I was when I was just training three months, stopping, three months, stopping. Um, I'm so much bigger than I was, it's, this is great, this is fantastic. Obviously my gains kind of went, it was a bit exponential, you know, I kind of went up and then kind of petered out just slightly, but I was still gaining, you know. And that second year, I literally went, I was literally plateaued completely, didn't make any more gains whatsoever. Um, and I'll talk more about why, I probably um, further on in the video, or I will do further on in the video. Um, however, it, there's a lot of factors for why I basically stopped making gains. Uh, it only really picked up um, in that in my this last two years. So 
just before I started my graduate scheme, um, my new job since I left university or just after I finished university, I kicked off. So from the age of 23 till now, so basically the last 18 months, um, I've trained much more in a kind of powerlifting way or, um, well, yeah, powerlifting way, I suppose. So what I've done is, uh, well, I was training in a more hypertrophic rep, rep range, with, uh, which a lot of bodybuilders advocate, which is sort of 12 to 15 reps somewhere in there. Uh, I actually took the reps right down to a four to six rep, rep range, more of a strength building uh, rep range, muscle bulking rep range. I think everyone kind of knows, you know, less reps, higher weight, put on more size, less weight, higher reps and your tone. So I think basically what I was doing, I just wasn't pushing myself to lift heavier weight um, was a big part of um, why I stopped making progress. So what I did is I got a bit more smart about the way I trained. So I had a, you know, on a Monday, you know, I would say, say we'll start on a Monday, be chest and triceps, and the next day it'd be back and biceps. Day after that would be legs. Day after that might be shoulders. Then a day off on the fifth day, and then back to repeating that ex that um, that cycle, or at least where possible. Like obviously there'll probably be, you know, stuff comes up and you have to take the odd rest day here and there. Fine. Um, but that was basically my split. So every single body part was being worked once every five days, essentially. So my muscles were getting plenty of time then to recover. Um, and that is where I've seen significant gains. That combined with the fact, and this is the big one, I started to eat better. I started to eat more. I mean, like for someone who wants to put on size, wants to gain muscle, spoiler alert, don't tell anyone, but you have to actually have to be in a caloric surplus. You have to eat more than you burn. I don't know what my thinking was before. I'll talk more about diet later, but that's kind of the way I've been training for the last two years. So, right. So the reason I started to break through that plateau was one, obviously I was giving my muscles sufficient amount of rest time. Two, I was eating more and therefore putting on weight. I think there's what most people are, or a lot of people are scared of is losing their abs or whatever and not feeling as shredded as they were or anything like that. But if you want to gain size and gain muscle, you can't, especially naturally, you've got to just accept the fact that you're either putting on muscle or you're shredding. You don't really get to do both at the same time unless you're on steroids. That's a fact. Unless you're a genetic freak, like absolute genetic freak with a, you know, I don't know, ridiculous amount of testosterone in their body. So... I was giving myself enough rest, rest time, Chain, changed up the way I was training completely. I still go by um, seven exercises, three sets each, but obviously if I do chest and triceps, it might be four on, tri uh, four on chest, three exercises on, on triceps, and that's it. And I kind of do a mixture now as well between, and I'll tend to pyramid a lot of exercises. Um, so sometimes if I start my session, I like to do compound movements as much as possible. So if I start my session, say on bench, I like to start at a lowish weight and I'll work my, my way up. So I'll start on a higher, slightly higher number of reps, lower weight, and I'll work my way up to basically kind of like my two to three rep max, something like that, three rep max, sort of 80% of one, my, my one, one rep max, 80 to 90% of one, one rep max, and then they hit that for three reps and then drop back down to where I started and hit that for as many reps as possible. So it's kind of in between sort of hypertrophic and powerlifting style of training. So I like to do a bit of both. So the way I've trained the last year, I would say, has been um, basically powerlifting through the winter. So hitting, really hitting the compound movements. So squat, deadlift, bench press, all twice a week if I can get it in there. Um, and just trying to lift heavy ass weights in the words of Ronnie Coleman I think you sort of said um, everybody want to be a bodybuilder but no one want to lift no heavy ass weights or something like that um, I was probably really racist that was an awful accent <laughs> but anyway he's got a point um, so you do need to lift heavy weight you do need to push yourself or you do need to progressive overload um, if you want to see the benefits um, so yeah if you ever hit a plateau it might be that I will do in the next sort of few months. And what I'll need to do is just basically completely change up the way I'm training. Regardless of whether it's the right way of training or not, it means your body's got really used to it and you need to just change it up. You know, you, words of Arnold Schwarzenegger said it in the last video, I'll say it again. You have to confuse the muscle. 
you have to keep the muscle guessing all the time. So, and he's right. It's like your muscles become proficient at what they need to do. And then, you know, that's it. They won't keep growing because they can do what you're telling them to do. Whereas if you start doing, you know, it's like this week I went to um, the gym here back home. I'm back in Bournemouth at the moment. Went to the gym here. And I had a couple of leg exercises that I don't have at my normal gym. So I did them. And I am still in pain now. Just because my muscles aren't quite used to that movement. So... That's what I suggest. You start hitting a bit of a plateau. You feel yourself like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, doing well, doing well. And, Ooh, I haven't really seen much progress for a few weeks. Just change up the way you're training completely. That might be, you know, more reps, less sets, more sets, less reps, whatever. Just completely change it up. And um, I bet you'll be amazed at the result. So I spoke very briefly about diet earlier, guys. Um, and now I want to talk about it. A significant amount more because for those of you who don't know I would probably say that diet is 70% of what you know where gains come from 70% training is 30% you know 70% of it comes from literally what you put in your body and it makes complete sense at the end of the day it's like anorexics are anorexics because they don't eat they're in a calorific, caloric deficit and they lose weight People are obese because they don't exercise very much, so they're not expending much energy, but they eat so much, you know, and it could be, you know, you could be the most active guy in the world. You could be the most active guy in the world with a ridiculously fast metabolism, but if you eat significantly more than your body can handle, you're still going to put on, on weight. You just, you know, you're probably in a fortunate position where if you're training a lot, you're burning so many calories, it's going to be very difficult to be able to eat enough without making yourself feel sick. Um, to put on a significant amount of weight. Um, so what you need to be doing is like, I think <laughs> probably in my, you know, two to three years ago, I just thought, right, do you know what? I've heard it. Everyone's heard the myth and it's right. It's scientifically proven, proven actually, but everyone hears the myth. You need one gram of protein per pound of body weight every single day. So for myself, that'd be around about 200 grams of protein a day, which probably equates to about six chicken breasts, something like that. So I was thinking, right, that's one I, I just need protein. I just need protein. So I'll try and eat as much protein as possible, cut the carbs right down, cut the fat right down, and um, yeah, I'll see results in no time. Excellent. So I do that, cut the carbs down, feel a bit rubbish because I've got no, um, no sugars in my system, no carbs in my system, so I feel a little bit low. Got really high protein, and I'm thinking then, why am I not, why am I not getting, you know, why am I not shredded? Why am I not getting, you know, putting on muscle, all this sort of stuff? It's because my body is trying to almost like convert that protein into glycogen to store it. Um, I forget what the name of the process is, uh, process is but, um, in your body, but that's what your body will do. It will go into survival mode and try, trying to convert that protein. So, I mean, if I was just going to consume purely protein, I'd probably need to consume, you know, two grams of protein per pound of body weight, which is an obscene amount if you're going to cut your carbs down to a really low level because you just basically protein will be fueling your entire body every single, you know, um, every single um, process in your body would be fueled by protein. So your body would try and then convert it into, yeah, like glycogen, fats, everything to try and go into survival mode. So that obviously didn't work. <laughs> so now I try to kind of just keep to, you know, depending on whether I'm cutting or bulking, I try to kind of keep it, you know, I know I need to have carbohydrates in my diet. I know if I have excessive amounts, then I'll start to gain weight. I know I need to have fats in my diet. Fats I like to try and keep as fairly consistent as possible. So around about sort of maybe 60 grams of protein, oh, 60 grams of protein, 60 grams of fat a day, something like that. And that's what I'm cutting or, or not, because otherwise it, it messes up your hormones and everything else. You need fats in your system. So many people are like, oh yeah, I just want to eat fat. It's like, don't do that. That's not a good thing for you. Not good at all. Um, so I like to just more than anything, you know, I keep my protein at one gram of um, protein per pound of body weight, but I really flex my carbohydrates and that's whether I'm cutting or bulking. So if I'm cutting, it might be sort of down to 200 to 250 grams of, of carbohydrates um, a day, which still sounds fairly high, but for someone who's very active, sort of training five times a week, it's not a, a ridiculous amount of, of carbohydrates by any stretch of the imagination. If I'm bulking, it might be up near 400 grams, which is a lot. Um, but then you just have to accept, you know, your abs are going to go a little bit, but you're going to gain size and get stronger and all that sort of stuff, which is great, you know. So then if you're cutting again, you've got to accept the strength might go a little bit. You've got less carbohydrates in your system. 
uh, less energy reserves, and you might have to accept the fact you're not going to be quite as strong. And that's just how it is, you know. And I think since I, I just kind of thought, you know, it's fine if I go to the gym, then I'll get bigger, and that's it. But it's, you know, and to a certain degree, you can probably get away with it for the first three to six months. You can kind of do what you want in the gym, similar sort of thing with your diet and pretty much everything you eat. If you're in a caloric surplus, then you'll put on muscle and it's kind of as simple as that. It won't go to fat or anything like that. It's, it should go to muscle as long as you're at least a little bit active. Um, and that's it really guys. So <sighs> big things, just quick recap. Big things would be diet is 70% of all your training, really, of everything that you do. If you want to make gains, you want to be a bodybuilder, powerlifter, anything, diet is 70% of it. Um, and the other 30% being the training. Just make sure if you hit a plateau, just change up. Whatever you're doing, just change it up. Doesn't matter what you do, but just do something different, you know, and uh, just make sure that your muscles are getting enough time to rest and rebuild. So thanks very much guys for watching, uh, that was quite a long video, hopefully it's quite informational as well. Um, please let me know your comments below, always interested to hear what you think. Um, please like, subscribe, share it if you're feeling really kind. Um, but yeah, as I always say, your support means a lot to me and uh, I'll try and put out one or two more of these kind of um, informational videos in the future. So. Take it easy guys, and I'll see you all next time. Before I go, I want to give you a front double bicep shot. Yeah. 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 Ooh.